Hi, this is Stefan for Siddelite. Welcome to this channel. Welcome to my little playlist classic light setups. Today we're going to talk about high key lighting. This is also a classic. This is very often used in fashion photography, also a little bit in beauty, in commercial photography, stuff for catalogs, something where you need the model in front of a white background. High key lighting means uh, the mood is very clean, it is very friendly, it's a very summery look also. And this is something you can do actually pretty easily in your studio. Uh, I want to start with something I see a lot and this is when people try to get that high key look by just using a lot of light and making the image flat. So in my example here I used just three big and soft light sources and made the whole image basically free of shadows um, which actually works for the background. So the background is pure white and it's very evenly lit but it's also very boring and the model doesn't have any depth and it's actually this is something I really dislike. So I want to show you different methods to make this a little bit more, well, a little bit more awesome. So first we are going to talk about the background because I need something that is, um, the background needs to be lit separately from the model. So what I'm trying to do is get a clean a silhouette for the model. So let's change the view here so we can actually see what's going on. So this is a very complicated way, but also something that works really, really well. So if you have the space and the time and the props for it, then go with the setup. It's actually pretty cool. What you need is two of these reflector boards and two strobes without any uh, light formers. So it's just a bare bulb and this reflects on the background of these uh, reflectors and it creates a very evenly lit uh, cyclorama for you. So um, also as you can see on the on the floor here there is a little triangle that's the shadow from both lights and that's where you place your model and that way you really get a nice silhouette and then you can add whatever light you want on the model. So you can do like loop lighting, you can do uh, normal portrait lighting or re even Rembrandt lighting is possible. If the model is a little bit um, behind that triangle, then you will see the light spill on the model. So make sure it's just the model is just there. Another way to do it um, is by just using two strip lights and this is something that works also really well because these strip lights um, they will also give you a cyclorama that's very evenly lit but you need less equipment actually and also less space. Let's show me um, this one. If I move this to the front it takes quite long until I get this shadow in the middle um, and then at some point you will see the light fall off in the middle behind the model. So um, but I think this is half a meter or maybe a meter that you need behind the model in with this technique. Don't put the lights in a way that they light to the model. Make sure the model is always in the dark. So there is a, a light fall off to the side, but you have that light fall off from both sides. So they actually cancel each other out. So this is something that you can really use. Um, make sure the model is in front of the, the line between these two lights. And that way you really get a pretty clean silhouette. Another way to do it is by just using one light with a standard reflector. That works actually also pretty well because you can just hide this uh, strobe behind the model. However, you need to make sure the model is actually covering that reflector. 
So if the poses allow this setup, it's probably the easiest and you can even go without um, a light shaper. So you can just make it a be a bare bulb, also possible, also gives a very nice and clean background. I tend to use a light shaper, however, just because I can, I have less light spilled into the room and it looks a little bit cleaner. The way I prefer to do it is this way. And this is something called a background reflector. It's actually a reflector that is not symmetrical. It has a long and a short side and that way it gives a very, um, actually a a pretty good light for the background that's the reason why they call it the background reflector because it's awesome for background um, so you can actually have a even distributed light source even if it's on one side um, with that setup you can actually use another light source for as a main light and probably a fill light so this will actually fill this the shadows a little bit don't need this necessarily but I think it helps the mood to get a little bit closer to this friendly setup one thing that's really awesome about this is that you have these shadows you have a clear light direction and you have pretty good uh, depth in that image and also the model can move pretty free and you can also use different clothing. It works for bright clothes, dark clothes. It makes a good skin tone because it's not uh, too bright. And it's also flattering light because um, it is a really big light source that's very close to the model. And the good thing is if you need to cut out, this is easy with this setup. One thing is you have to be careful with this background reflector because if you turn this up to make the background even nicer, um, you will run into some problems. Uh, let me show you. So I um, created a setup here. We have even darker, um, darker walls because that gives less reflections and um, I turned this very very bright so the background is pure white so if you have something like a catalog or something commercial stuff for for internet or e-commerce whatever it's very easy because you don't actually don't need to cut it out you can just paste it in your layout because this is pure white and your page probably is also pure white but you will run into problems as soon as you zoom in and this is something that happens all the time that the hairs will just merge with the with the background and that way you lose a lot of definition so make sure this light is close to white but not pure white so Speaking in numbers, I always uh, use the Photoshop numbers that go from 0 to 255. I always uh, try to be in the 250 range here and that way I can just pump it up in Photoshop a little bit and still have all that information on the hairs and they won't merge into the background because if that happens, you can't fix it and post this is just lost information so i hope you liked that video and i hope you liked that series um, i will post that setup also in the satellite community so you can download this and play around with it maybe you have some ideas that you want to share with us and if you want to leave a like or a comment or even a subscription um, it's very much appreciated. So have a nice evening. This was Stefan for Satellite.